Let's react to that. Why not? This is be fun. Why do I keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result? Isn't that the definition of insanity? Yeah, pretty much. Am I mad? Hi, I'm Onga Kamen. Nice to meet you. You might know me as a Ruby hater who's obsessed with Ruby, even though at best I make a single video about the series once a year. So, funny story. About I mean, at a least you, so you make more sense to compared to the people who uh, uh, make you a living for in regards to Ruby. Yeah, well, I made a wager with my audience that if you could help fund some emergency car repairs, I would review Volume 9 of Ruby. And I have to say, I appreciate my audience, because wouldn't you know it, I was pleasantly surprised with the Volume 2. If you want my opinion straight up, I think this is the best written volume of Ruby out of the nine volumes. It's certainly better than- Wow, why do people like say that? I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, a lot of people kept saying that, and I think, uh... In a, yeah, it makes sense because, you know, there's four writers here since Volume 6 and uh, Volume 9 specifically is the latest volume, so naturally, uh, that's the case. But I don't know, I think it's just more, has to do with more with the fact that A, people forgot about Volume 6 and B, people just don't want to uh, understand Ironwood's complexity uh, in regards to Volume 7 and 8. Volume 8? You really have to try to be worse than Volume 8. Nah. That you guys are just iron with sims, man. That being said, I do think that Volume 9 does have some very glaring issues to it, and a lot of it does stem from when you consider the context of the previous few volumes. And I have an issue volume. While the fights aren't as memorable as previous volumes, they were still pretty entertaining, especially like against the Red Prince. Considering that we're in essentially what is a filler volume, I do appreciate there's much Damn. more focus lens on the main character. <laughs> he said the thing, he said the filler one volume. One of the most egregious criticisms that I had and others have about Ruby is that we kind of have a lack of focus on Team Ruby. Even in the earlier volumes, a lot of development was given to side characters like Jean. Granted, I think the fact that if you essentially had to cut off the main cast from everyone else, that was a bit telling on that. But I do appreciate that we're getting character moments such as Ruby Rose finally thinking back on all the terrible things that happened in the previous volume, about how they messed up Penny's death. It's refreshing to see the characters actually be confronted on their mess-ups and look internally about it. Actual character development. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> the location of the ever no i kind of get it while he's trying to say he's trying to say that oh you know the characters messed up and uh they should feel guilty over things but guilt is wrong you know i think the ruby writers are just kind of big brains in the sense that they're seeing what's beyond you know a lot of people think that oh feeling guilty over things or questioning certain things it is a good thing, uh, not necessarily. If anything, being feeling guilty over all your past mistakes is worse than uh, how you were in, in in that situation. Because when you were like fighting an Ironwood and trying to save the world in Volume Eight, you weren't thinking about the past. You were trying to do what was the right thing in the present moment. And the issue with all, a lot of the Volume Nine uh, cast and how Ruby and a lot of people were act John and the acting were there is because they're kind of letting the past mistakes uh, haunt them, and uh, the because of that they kind of like made a huge, quite a few mistakes in the present moment. Wonderland is a nice addition to the series. It actually manages the tie to the fairy tale illusion into the setting and plays with the characters who are. I don't know. I think uh, manga company and a lot of critics just have a very unhealthy mentality, and they just want everyone. To follow that to the similar the mentality. So Who's manga coming, my man? If you uh, think that uh, feeling guilty over your past mistakes, or even not, even not even past mistakes, past achievements, because certainly uh, the thing those uh, Team Ruby did uh, was not exactly mistakes. Being a direct inspiration from the Caterpillar from Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Who are you? Or Little. Oh yeah, Little is a positive here. I like the Little Mouse. 10 out of 10 would want to have a spin-off to see Little aka Somewhat's adventures. Jean finally gets rid of his banana hair and becomes a lot more competent in fighting. How did you find us? How are you the rusted knight? And when did you get so mature? You need to be stopped! All of a 20-year age gap, huh? Yeah, that's not creepy at all. I feel as though the Curious Cat was a much better villain it's than funny. what we had. Also, yeah, you fucking more. I feel as up. though the Curious Cat stopped! Almost a 20 Oh wait, huh? 
39 to 49. Your age, yeah, yeah, huh? We have yeah, no that's idea. Not creepy we at no all. Idea. I feel as though the curious cat was a much better villain than what we had in the previous volume. Oh, he kind of. He was a pretty. Wait. Villain. You need to be stopped. Almost. So, uh, John was 19 during volume eight. Then, uh, and apparently the Ale the story of the Alex and the cat and whatever was supposed to be a story they have uh, experienced when they were children so naturally i think uh, the digits should be doubled so it's probably 48 he's he was probably 48 hmm yeah that makes sense but i mean Luz has to also get out of the ever after and then write the story so he might even be 40 uh yeah better villain than what we but for those who don't want to watch another 40 minute video going over that team ruby and friends done screwed up everything Some of the highlights include making Ironwood so paranoid and acting like the very same people that they claim they were wrong for lying to people. Uh, I don't... It, this is the thing. When you are like critiquing a, criticizing a show, you're not actually criticizing a show. You're criticizing life. You're talking about your own life experiences and understanding of life. And one thing I absolutely hate about uh, people in general is that they try to uh, hold responsible uh, responsibility for... Uh, for people outside of it, for example, people blame me if I said something that uh, made other people angry. Like we have a lot of these stuff in like in our modern day and age, you know. Like someone says something uh, angry during a YouTube video, or I don't know something really casual during a YouTube video, and I don't know some crazy fanatics uh, use that as an excuse to kill a bunch of people, and they say, "Oh, this person uh, said this thing, therefore uh, this person acted like a crazy maniac," and. Uh, that's a really uh, bad and wrong way to see it because everyone is responsible for their own choices. Ironwood is responsible for his own choices. You know, Ruby and Team Ruby didn't just uh, handhold uh, Ironwood. They didn't, they didn't use magical powers to brainwash Ironwood into doing that. Well, all the while <laughs> lying to Ironwood, not using their brains to negotiate with Ironwood to evacuate civilians with the schnee. I mean, I guess they could have tried harder to negotiate, but. You saw what happened. The corporations jets and love. I was the one who tried to arrest them first. The be out and afterwards, it was kind of like difficult to uh, negotiate. The hands of the stupidest villain of all. Why? Like I, I at least understand people who think Ironwood was dumb. You know. Time. Like at least, at least stick with that. If anything, I think it's pretty dumb to uh, think that Team Ruby is responsible for I don't Ironwood's. Uh, uh, Ironwood's metal breakdown, or the fact that Metal and Atlas fell, despite the fact that Salem and Cinder was the ones who attacked. So maybe the people who are actually did the bad thing are directly responsible for it, and not, uh, you know, the heroes. Testing someone they've never met before, and making the stress for Ironwood get even worse, coming up with a stick. Who cares about where you, like, met someone or Never before? Met. See, this is the biggest issue of a lot of people's own mentality. This isn't about Ruby, this is about life. Uh, folks, uh, people care so much about, oh, you know about this person, you don't know about this person. Yeah, I knew about, uh, for example, I knew more about a certain person than a complete stranger, but what if? What if the complete stranger is just a better person than the person I knew? You know, I used to knew, know Ironwood from Volume 2, and Robin is a new character, but it doesn't change the fact that Ironwood is a jackass and is much more uh, worse of a person than Robin. Uh, and uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, this is just pure attachments. People have uh, so much attachment before. to it, they think that uh, they, uh, they knew Ironwood in the past, therefore they have this cer certain obligation and uh, uh, heavy burden to trust Ironwood, despite the fact that Ironwood is doing everything wrong and doing everything at least worse than Robin do is doing. And making the stress for Ironwood get even worse, coming up with a stupid plan, which for some reason includes evacuating everyone to a desert in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's not, yeah, it's not the middle of nowhere, it's vacuo. I mean, they could have said Shade Academy, but I think there was a misstep. Uh, they kind of messed up, but at the same time, I also think that, well, uh... 
trying to cram an uh, entire population into a school might have also been a very detrimental. So maybe saying vacuous might have been a better idea. But I think also they could have just said the capital of Wacky. Which is again a brain fart, but it was a hard decision. Okay. You know, they were making decisions uh, at a very rapid world. pace, and if you Every uh, make decisions at a rapid well, pace, you can miss out. brains up. and forgot about Cinder being around, and didn't take that into consideration when coming up their plan of evacuation, with Penny just standing around like an idiot during said evacuation. Oh, and Penny died at John's hands. She was asking for it. No, look. <sighs> yeah, this also Literally. this is the thing about all the critics. She yeah, you can uh, complain about all this shit, like, in any type of fiction. Like, oh, this character did some uh, thing, it's stupid. Oh, this character uh, stood around. Maybe you should criticize Cinder and uh, Salem for being corrupted. Oh, this character uh, tried to destroy the world because of uh, his stupid reason. Oh, this character tried to destroy the world uh, because uh, they were greedy and they want to experience free freedom, like uh, Cinder. Was. I've Why don't you talk about them being stupid also? Found it kind of bad. Now, I re Yeah. Really condense that, and that's not really the their choices. And to some extent, we do get that. After all, the writers make it perfectly clear that Ruby Rose, the main character, is going through some depression after essentially screwing everything up in the previous volume. This is good. Well, some of it is. I'll go into it later. But I got a lot. Oh, depression is good. You know, <laughs> I mean, if you frame it like that, then sure. I mean, I, I probably, they probably didn't want to Ruby sound like that, but. <laughs> Especially with the ending of this arc. But what I'll say here is that we really don't get anything for the last volume. We get a few nods and winks to the events, and Weiss even bringing it up in one section, but it's immediately pushed to the side. No addressing the events of the bridge, no talking about lying to Ironwood, which made things insanely worse. Are we- Yeah, oh, man. First of all, you know, limited time, obviously. And also, I do wonder, uh... Even like sort of like small things like if they try to make a 20 minute uh, talking scene or maybe to a talking episode where the characters talk around and blah 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 about the events that happened. Uh, first of all, that's kind of boring. Second of all, uh, that's probably just going to cost uh, a lot anyway because motion capture animating is still uh, expensive. <laughs> You're gonna talk about how the crew was so easily trounced by one of the worst villains in all history and were flung into the ever after? How they could have died if there wasn't an actual story for the audience to follow? Are you gonna ignore the fact that Penny died and it was also Jean who killed her? Speaking of Jean, the guy's aged about- Yeah, people are- oh yeah, people are always saying, oh, Jean killed the Penny. Oh, that's going to be such a big thing. No, it's not. It's never going to be a big thing and I knew it because, first of all, in order for it to be a big thing, you need to be a lot of Penny- Penny. You, you need to be a- Pity stupid bitch and not understand the fact that uh, assisted suicide is not the same as murder and uh, John did not have any malice towards uh, Penny it was just the situation was very dire and uh, what can I say Team Ruby is just much more understanding people compared to the average reverse if well, Ruby like got angry towards John and started beating John and uh, hold, held a resentment for uh, for 10, John because uh, John killed Penny uh, I think that would be a heavy out of character scene for Ruby if yeah. anything I think it's, it was very really surprising that uh, uh, you know Ruby passed out Wait. because of that but you know depression she was uh, there was a lot of things that were going on in her mind but at the same time you know She's not a fucking dumbass. She she understands the situation and why John had to do that. From his home and anyone he actually knew. I like this, but are we going to address the mental stress he had to go through? A lot of this is probably being saved for volume 10, and I personally hate- You know, 10 episodes, really hard to do. That. Because here's the thing, other than finally ending the teasing of the will they, won't they, with Yang and Blake finally Yay! holding out the, one of the corniest scenes I've ever seen, this volume comes off as pointless since the character issues were things that didn't make sense. Let me give an example. When the team comes across the herbalist in the fourth episode, they are essentially confronted by younger versions of themselves in an attempt to challenge their sensibilities and tempt them with things in order to make life easier. Such as having Weiss be a nobody, Blake becoming either a human or a cat, and Yang getting her arm- A <laughs> human or a cat? <laughs> the choice to become a cat? <laughs> <laughs> arm back and immediately they shoot these ideas down now you think that may be a good characterization but the character's experiences prevented them from falling into temptation except it makes no sense Weiss ever since her earlier days wanted to make the Shanine name great despite what her father did and she was going to do that by becoming a huntress Lake only hit her identity as a fondness because she used to be a criminal since she was with the terrorist group the White Fang and even then her being labeled as a bridge between humans and faunus doesn't make any sense. Especially when you consider the last few volumes Blake never really did anything to help with the faunus <laughs> he was essentially a glorified background character and well, but it's kind of really do uh, strange to think because uh, 
uh, the parish itself did offer uh, Blake an uh, opportunity to become uh, like entirely human. That's sort of big if you actually care about it, but Blake doesn't volumes, care. Blake never really did anything to help with the faunus. <laughs> he was essentially a glory. But you know, changing your skin, it doesn't really change much. My background character. And then there were a ton of opportunities for that to happen since the group was an atlas. The fondness of using Capital of the World, supposedly. And Yang? That's the closest that makes any sense, but still makes little sense, since she had already accepted her arm was gone and had gotten used to her new normal. I understand the focus is to be on Ruby Rose, and to break her down even further and question that she shouldn't be who she is. But it really feels like if you're going to have a scene like this, you should have touched on elements that are more related to things that happened more recently, or make sense to the characters. Like for Yang, since she was the first one knocked off the magic pathway in the last volume, point out how she was too weak to actually protect the one she cared about, since her attempt to save Ruby was ultimately useless. Oh uh, yeah, that, I mean, that could work. Ruby and your friends are in the ever- Like, you could turn into a very stronger version of yourself. But I mean, is the tree's purpose is to make you, like, go strong? Because when you choose someone or choose to be someone else, you go all in, right? Strength isn't just uh, a factor. After. Blake should- Like, if you- For example, if you, if you want to be strong, you can't just say, Oh, I uh, become OP. That's not how it works. You know? You have to become a summer rose or you have to like uh, choose a certain warrior in the past and mimic that person in its entirety. Be question about her relationship with Yang and if she sees Yang and uh, whether that's going to bring you strength and victory or not is you know debatable. As an actual love interest, all of her feelings are based in pity. I say this not because I'm against the ship, but because what also Because that's a kind of also true, you know. Uh, People kind of like talk, talk about uh, strength in, in a lot of sense, in, in a, a, a straight line. Oh, this st person is stronger than this, or this uh, stronger than uh, this person is stronger than that, or not. It's not that simple. Everything is almost like an equivalent exchange. This is also why the dinosaurs got extinct uh, during the Ice Age. Because their bodies are just huge and therefore they need a lot of food to sustain that huge amount, huge amount of big bodies. And uh, yes, and uh, that was their one big weakness. So despite physically being strong, the, the, uh, the exchange of that power is that, uh, you know, they have to eat a lot and uh, something like that can't be just sustained during the Ice Age. So they got all extinct to the scene later in the volume where she and Yang can- And in regards to uh, Ruby, I think that's also kind of a thing because if Ruby, for example, decide to be Ru Summer Rose, there's going to be a lot of uh, downsides that come with it. ...best to each other, at least have the groundwork for said confession. And Weiss, her home was destroyed and she had a hand in that. And we even bring this up a little bit earlier in the volume. But again, brush to the side. If you're going to have a scene like this, you need to actually confront your characters with their mistakes. Make them face the repercussions of their actions, or at the very least, make sure they're confronted with things that they are- But here's the thing, even your understanding of confronting is not deep enough. This 28 minute, you didn't explain your what you want deeply enough. Okay, you confronted. They confronted it. And that's it. You move on. I was saying they they need to create a time to tr like a, a time machine and go to back to into the past in order to prevent uh, the fall of Atlas. Because that's the only way to actually stop you know uh, confront the past at least in your definition. Questioning about themselves and don't throw them softballs. You had a chance to really have the crew be challenged, but nah, these three don't really matter for this volume. Again, it's focused on Ruby and to break her down more and more. One more aspect we'll talk about and we'll move on. But I mean. I don't know, man. I think you're just kind Here's of self-projecting your own desires into this because, uh, you know, uh, R Team Ruby, uh, excluding Ruby, uh, ever, the other three are just uh, was fine. Like, they were at least fine with the events that happened. Even if they did ma make mistakes, I don't know, like saying a one-way ticket to vacuum or something, they don't, they can't fix the mistakes. Even if you, like, fought against Cinder and lost, you know, you lost, you lost. There's a lot of Salem in the Relic. There wasn't there, like any specific re like psychological reason that they lost. And with how the volume ends, it other than well, uh, Yang falling accidentally. Yeah. Feeling that it was just a filler argument. But you know, writing. Because we're going. I will say though, the curious cat is probably my favorite villain from the series besides Torchwick. Not only because he has a backstory that actually makes sense and is a lot more understanding, but he's also a trickster and works with it. I like that. But this is where we turn to the other villain of the season. I also, he's voiced by a catchy voice actor. Yeah, yeah. Neo. Straight up, Neo is not a character, and it's not because she doesn't have a voice. It's no, it's because she doesn't have a voice. Like, how can you people uh, be so discriminatory? <laughs> no, 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 don't you, uh, don't you lie. A lot of people, uh, like, uh, the majority of people who consider Nyo to be not a character, and only Nyo not to be a character, is because uh, she can't talk. Therefore, you're actually kind of discriminating because of her disabilities. No, seriously. Like, just be uh, admit that. <laughs> 
<laughs> like what else are you supposed to say? Why does Nyo only specifically have this criticism of her not being an actual character? Where and these criti certain critics just don't uh, use the same argument for any other character. It's because they don't uh, under. Is is because they only care about what other people say. They care about people's words and not about uh, you know the facial expressions and the animations. Used and thrown away, both in the literary sense and the meta sense as well. I really love Neo because this uh, uh, Neo is just a kind of a character that shows that uh, actions speak louder than words. You know. Now I'm sure someone is pointing out. Well, Ruby was there when Torchwick died by ironic twist. Maybe Neo just put two and two together, and that's a fair point. But there are two counters to that. The first being obviously Neo held Cinder responsible to some degree of responsibility for Torchwick's death, and if she knows that Ruby was there when Torchwick died, why even go after Cinder in the first place? And secondly. I should probably want to go after two, both of them. Second of all, this is a very emotionally immature uh, person who was uh, dependent on Roman and uh, she's just uh, getting out her anger of uh, Roman's death on Ruby and Cinder. How do either of them know Torchwick died? He died being gulped down by a Grimm, something that neither Neo nor Cinder actually saw happen. They never found a body, so how did either of them know that Torchwick died? Maybe there's something in like that book they keep telling me it's canon that I'm not gonna read because I shouldn't have to because this is a show. I bring this up because there's a large lack of- Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Information. And that's not given to the audience. But it's pretty obvious, it's you can like put two to two together. This is a character that is Neo. Hell, throughout the previous volumes, we see Neo get mistreated by Cinder, but sticks with her, and even tosses her away like a tool at the end of the last volume. If Neo was an actual character, you'd think, maybe, just maybe, the bitch who manipulated her, threw her away, had a hand in Torchwick's death. Oh yeah, okay, I was kind of like capping, maybe you have your own reasons to not maybe. like Neo, Just but... maybe, the bitch, if Neo was an actual character, you'd think, maybe, just maybe, the bitch who manipulated her, threw her away, had a hand in Torchwick's death because he got involved with her, might have been lying about how Torchwick died, about who killed Torchwick. If we're being honest, it was a- I mean, I would have to know how- how Tor Torchwick died, and also complaining about the characters being stupid is kind of ridiculous. Because if they were truly smart, uh, they wouldn't be villains. If Cinder was truly smart and uh, intelligent, she would realize that working for uh, Salem is not a great idea. And uh, being uh, controlled by fear, uh, her fears and uh, lusting over power is not uh, the right thing. And uh, you also will have realized that hey, being a sucker, a revenge field sucker who is only like uh, controlled by her her emotions and losses is also not great. But you right. know they're not uh, the smartest of people. That's why uh, they're also you know doing all of this. This is kind of one of the biggest issues with a lot of these critics because they are every like if there's a character that does every single thing that they wanted that they would have done in a similar situation, they like that character. That's the only way they would like that character. If there's any kind of other person that acts differently than their understanding of life or they how they would have acted in that situation, then uh, that, per that character is bad, you know? Like they can only understand themselves their own opinions and what they would have done, but they don't understand other people or what, why other people do their own thing. That's pr probably why uh, Manga Kevin just has so many critic videos, you know, not just Ruby. I kind of like look at, just looking at the thumbnail of these videos, it's kind of like tragic almost. Like, oh, this, uh, this is how you do uh, bad, uh, this is the good way and this is the bad way. There is no good and bad. Truly, there is no good and bad. The only reason it looks bad to you is because you don't understand. Neo is nothing but a tool for the writers to use, much like Salem is. If we're supposed to expect that Neo is being so I smart- I mean, if you really want to go towards that route, every single character is a tool to uh, tell a story, but come on, dude. Ace. Neo is nothing but a tool for the writers That's to just a buzzword. use, much like Salem is. If we're supposed You just want to excuse the fact that you uh, don't appreciate or don't want to understand the story. Supposed to expect and trying to use a lot of buzzwords, that's kind of how every single uh, Ryan critics kind of work. So smart and cunning to essentially have Ruby effectively commit what is on par of that of Hiri Kiri in this season, but is too dumb to realize that she should have dropped Cinder like a pound of bricks or even realize that Cinder's a lying bitch. What am I supposed to- Yeah, people are get like that. Take from this. And I know there's someone who's- If they were truly smart, there wouldn't be a single villain in this story, if you know. If they were, if people were truly smart, then there wouldn't be a single war in this entire, uh, entire history of humankind, but that's clearly not the case. Thought there's gonna bring up the supplemental material that's actually tied to this volume that explains her backstory, and I regret to inform you that is a lazy form of storytelling. Supplemental material should be used to help expand a character and story, not do the- I don't know, if you were truly smart, you wouldn't have, like, understood all of this. So in a way, 
maybe complaining or criticizing other people for being stupid is kind of wrong because, well, uh, you kind of stu one of those, those idiots too. We all are. The actual me. You know, we all are trying to have a deeper understanding. The material of it. One and I'm all, uh, this video is also uh, helps in uh, uh, making other people understand certain things. I hope so. How does but that's the only reason I'm doing. You'll even know these two died. Oh, um, she probably guessed. Honestly, this is really. She probably guessed. Yeah, this is one of the uh, funny parts. Over the place with these characters and the continuity. But it's not that hard to just assume that Neo guessed. Pretty for them, and there's something to really consider that there were a lot more writers for these episodes. So no, Neo is pretty smart, which <laughs> which he needs to be. I think Penny is really understandable because uh, most likely uh, Neo might have actually heard Team Ruby talking about Penny's death. Uh, well, maybe she spied on them, or maybe she just assumed that, that because uh, uh, they, uh, Neo saw that uh, uh, Team Ruby didn't have Penny with them. So as well. Now you can enjoy the previous seasons, but if my channel is any indication, you should know that I don't like Volume Seven or Eight for a lot of reasons. In Volume Nine, well, while I do appreciate, well, you're wrong because I think Seven and Eight are one of the best in the series. Shady being a lot more character driven, and, and also Six is also written by them. It what is the fuck? honestly a return to form for the animation. It got on my nerves for quite a few reasons, like how nothing really mattered in this volume. I'll go into more depth real soon, but essentially, aside from Blake and Yang hooking up, nothing from this volume was really accomplished. It was a really great experience, all things considered. Like the visuals are great. Yeah, I think there are a lot of the visual flavors. And uh, the everything related to the tree and reincarnation and all that stuff uh, was uh, great. Jean, even though he did mature and became a much more powerful badass, goes back to the banana hairstyle and he regresses back to youth. All that That's the only kind of uh, bad thing, but I don't know, I think they just won't want to <laughs> make White Knight happen without it being weird. That's probably why they did it. I mean, I really don't mind this because, mainly because the way uh, John traveled into the past was weird, and him also gaining his uh, younger body is also weird. So I don't Thanks, care either way. Just goes away after she commits Sudoku, and yes, that's something that does happen. And Neo remains in the Ever After until she basically gets out of her tree. The more significant thing we learn is that the giant tree in the Ever After is actually what created the two gods, and we learn their origins. And it's like, why did we need this information? Okay. Does this information have any effect on the actual plot of Salem? Does it offer a solution Ruby can use to convince the gods to not destroy Remnant? If why do you only care about Salem? Like, why does certain people only care about that aspect? Like, only care about that aspect is really uh, detrimental to your own mental health and your own experience of the story because what, are you saying that everything uh, unrelated to defeating Salem is unimportant? Like the whole, then this entire series is practically uh, unimportant because none of them actually defeat Salem in this 9 volume. Summoned? No. I don't know. I think your own mental uh, state is uh, at fault here, and your own terrible arguments. So why does this? Inf and your terrible view, uh, way of uh, weaving fiction, I guess. Information map. And weaving vi life, being fiction. Sure. I find it kind of funny while doing research. I found that that one of the writers, Eddie Rivas, put out a tweet saying that the theme of Volume Seven and Nine were about failure and self-discovery. And I mean no disrespect to Mr. Rivas here, but I feel like that theming was dropped, or at the very least was applied in not the right way. <laughs> What do you mean? Like episode 7 and 8 was all about that. And even before then they talked a lot about that. What are you talking about? This is because the last three volumes really had to bend over backwards to allow ass pulls, deus ex machinas, and turning people insane. Ass pulls, deus ex machinas. Bro, you're just trying, like, those things don't exist. Honestly, those things are just dumbest things. Mainly stupid to make Team Ruby on the right. Let's go back and- Like, it's a fictional story where a lot of things are happening and also uh fictional stories are fictional sciences and uh fictional sciences can be made up on the spot in time again shall we blake and yang leaked information to robin and giving ironwood another reason not to trust team ruby ruby and co lying to ironwood as soon as they get into atlas ren pointing out that the teams are in situations that are too big and essentially being demonized for it especially when he turns to adults no real contemplation uh, if you if one of your reasons uh, for hating a show is because of plot holes or because of duo six machinas and ass balls i'm sorry you're hating a show for the wrong reasons and by the way every single fictional show has those problems especially long-running ones so uh you you literally not be able to enjoy uh, anything if you keep clinging to those rules. Ditto concerning Ironwood was done the right call. Any sort of being brought up is pushed to the side or forgotten about. There's a lot more, but none of this gets brought up. Team Ruby doesn't actually consider this at all, which arguably a lot of people would consider to be a failure on Team Ruby's part. Let's assume that Volume Seven and Eight were set up and failure. Logically speaking, Volume Nine would be the reflection point in a series like this. What does Ruby and Co do in response to failure? How do they deal with the fact that they believe they failed in protecting the relics, the people, Penny being killed, and allowing Atlas to fall? Simple. They don't. As I've stated, this volume doesn't really- Yeah, they don't. Majority of them don't. They kind of like say, like, at least it's a 2-2-4. Uh, why isn't Ruby are, uh, 
like angry towards their, themselves for the the mistakes they did. At least Rice is not that angry. Blakey and they probably are okay with the things that are, that are the way they are. Yeah, they messed up. They didn't uh, stop Cinder. They let Penny die, but you know, letting death kind of haunt you is what uh, you how you create characters like John, who just constantly wants to save the uh, ever afters and constantly like sh shooting bricks every time. Every time you know Penny's name is mentioned, uh, touch on that, and they also blame themselves for everything that happened. Even if you did a mistake in the past, you can't change the past. There's a difference between learning from the past and uh, you know regretting the past because regretting the past means you're actively letting that thing uh, cloud your own judgment in this present moment, and you're ruining this present moment because of that. Why Blake and Yang? Maintain. This is a very big psychological issue. A lot of uh, psychological problems exist because a lot of people, just like Mang and Kamen, uh, don't let the past go and try to uh, hold people uh, uh, for their past mistakes instead of like helping them uh, uh, do good things in the present moment. Their core beliefs, as if they didn't just screw up royally, which is why when they're like, yeah, if you uh, if Team Ruby did a whoopsie, then you say they did an oopsie. When they said that, uh, uh, when Weiss said that one way ticket to Vacuo to uh, to uh, the the Sapphire creation was that called, yeah, the guy and uh, create that portal in that way, uh, there's an oopsie, but it's an oopsie, so what. You can't change the past, you have to move on. They're given such weak confrontations that they can easily just shrug off. Here's the thing about the failure in writing. Not a failure of writing like Ruby likes to do most of the time. It's that when you have a character fail and it's a sense- Yeah, I almost want uh, want certain characters to lecture the shit out of uh, Ruby and use that as an excuse to lecture the audience because some people just really are gung-ho and stuck in the past. Like, theme, let the past go. Uh, Ruby critics. By the failure. It can be as simple as accepting the failure and learning from it, or overcoming the failure and turning into a success of some sort. From my perspective, Team Ruby has been failing and failing and failing multiple times in the last few seasons, only for the writers to be telling us that they're automatic- No, because failure is definitely, definitely something different, you know? Like, first of all, Team Ruby is like a small pawns on the chessboard. They don't have that, uh, that much strength compared to the maidens. There's only so much they could do in the right, instead of allowing the audience to come to their own conclusions. And also, yeah, Salem and uh, Cinder are also really strong foes. They essentially had to make- You know, Salem is literally immortal and she's also the one, one of the few people in the universe who knows magic. Ironwood into an evil villain, but Team Ruby never once tried to make a compromise with the general. Heck, they spent most of the time just sipping tea while the Atlas army was fighting Salem. And there were ways of making a compromise. Well, what a- You will act like a, almost as if Ironwood uh, accepts uh, anyone's talking about Jutsu. Oscar tried the hardest and he got shot. <laughs> <laughs> like I said in my volume 8 review, they had the Schnee Dust Company ships that- So after like Oscar, Oscar probably told what happened to Ruby and stuff off screen. And there's uh, like after Oscar's attempt, there wasn't really much you could do. Out of mantle. You know, it, it was a waste of time at that point. That would have allowed Atlas to go up in the sky. Whatever. You know, if I was myself in, in the show, I might have tried again, especially when uh, Ironwood called uh, Ruby, but uh, I don't know. I might have been just as sassy as Ruby was when Ruby talked to Ironwood then. Protecting the citizens, the relic, and make sure the maiden power was out of Salem's hands. It really comes off as though some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. And in this volume, we're told what is essentially a god entity that they're in the right and you keep going because it's the correct thing that they're already doing. It defeats the purpose of failure when you're told directly by God that what you're doing is all right. You don't learn from your failures. This is literally avoiding the topic of failure and showing that Team Ruby was right all along. Any ign <laughs> yes, that's exactly the point. Because you're wrong for trying to cling to the past. Even if someone was did an oopsie in the past, there's only so much you can do. You just want want to like uh, prove and be right. You just want to ridicule Team Ruby. You want to bully Team Ruby and want them to be constantly be depressed and. And want to be proven right. That's the thing. All you want to do is want to be proven right. And you're kind of like uh, angry towards the writers for uh, having a different opinion than you do. Acknowledgement and a failure. In and their, uh, their opinion is uh, the more righteous one in my opinion because love yourself is a much more uh, healthy mentality than uh, you should feel guilty over your past mistakes now. You know, compared to that, love yourself is an actual great uh, message that is going to be the greatest message in all of your hum human history. 
in the past few volumes has been followed up by a reassurance that what they're doing is right. The writing feels afraid that the main characters actually make mistakes and take accountability for them. As for the self-discovery- WHAT ACCOUNTABILITY?! What? Are they, what are they supposed to do? Go to prison? That's not going to change things- anything! That's how you held- uh, you, you hold people accountable in, in your own modern era. If you want to like hold people accountable, you put people in prison and you ruin their lives. That's how you pe hold people accountable. Love yourself now is uh, different than you know putting yourself in prison self-discovery. I'm not going to go in detail about Ruby herself in this section of the video, but even after all the stuff she goes through in this volume, she and the rest of the cast just remain the same as they always are. They don't really change, aside from Blake and Yang becoming a little bit more... Ruby changed a lot. I think uh, that's the thing. Like even back, back in volume 4 and 3, she blamed herself for a lot of things. A lot. And she gotta stop doing that. I kind of, uh, like even during the final episodes of volume 8, Oh, I mean, volume 9, you can kind of see that, uh, uh, she's calm, but she's also not, like, burdened. Even during certain scenes in volume 4, uh, Ruby was, like, very aggressive and angry, and all of that anger kind of, uh, stems from the fact that she also blames herself for the things that she can't change. Uh, you know, angry towards her own weakness. Cutesy and but together. In the previous volumes, they were already uncompromising and had a black and white view of things in the previous volume. We're essentially told that it's all right to be that way. And frankly, with how this volume is set up, it's kind of disgusting. Questioning yourself is suicidal. Anyone who questions you must be your enemies. You question yourself and you realize that you can't do anything about it. You can't change the past. And consequences for your actions. What consequences? What do you mean consequences? Go deeply into that. What are they supposed to do? Go to prison? Is that your so-called consequences? Is that what your, sir, your so-called uh, justice and your learning a lesson? People learn, go to the, this magical place called prison for the uh, bad actions that they do, and they magically become great people. Is that how uh, your life Who goes? Who cares, so long as you feel a little- Is that what you really want, Manga Kevin? Guilty about it because people make mistakes. You're still a good person. You don't need a change. Self-discovery is rejected because you're who- But that's the thing. I think the writers are just- Giga brain. They don't understand what the writers are saying. They don't understand uh, what the message was. And if they did understand, they w don't want to accept it. Yes, changing yourself is wrong. Because at the end of the day, you can be yourself. That's the only real change that can actually happen. Yes, the point of this message, uh, the show is changing yourself is wrong because it's pretension. You're pretending to be someone else. All these great critics, they're failing and they're being cancerous because they're all pretending to be someone else. Manga Karen, in making this video at this current point of time, is trying to be someone else than his true nature. You are. You're trying to be this great critic and trying to bring out all this uh, George Sex Machina, which is nothing but buzzwords that is uh, used by other critics. It's not your own words, it's not, it didn't come up from your understanding. But more so. And you're just pissed off by the fact that uh, the show is uh, telling you a message that can change you. It can change you into accepting yourself. Your, in your entire YouTube career has been, trying to, has been trying to be pretentious, trying to be someone else than you are not. You're trying to make an effort in order to be smarter than that you are. The show is just telling you to accept yourself and love yourself now. Oh, I know that sounds ridiculous. And that's that's a good that's a good message. That's the, uh, no other message is going to be better than loving yourself. So in that but sense, volume nine is the best written volume because the most important message is uh, in this volume: love yourself, accept yourself. That's seriously the message of the- Be yourself, you know? This volume pushed to me, and it's honestly kind of disgusting. Which leads us to this point. Legit. Straight up. Well, I mentioned it as a positive in the beginning of this video. It devolved into a negative to me over the course of the season. Why? Yeah, it's because it's devolving into a bad thing because you disagree with, with uh, the message. You are the exact opposite of, uh, of Miles and Carrie, the exact opposite of Kirsten and Eddie, you know, these people uh, want everyone to be themselves. They want to everyone to love themselves, accept themselves, while you want to ridicule other people for the mistakes they made and saying that they're bad people, you know, bad writing. This is the bad writing. The right and wrong way to make a hero. This is good. Why can't you just like be this person? 
you know, being yourself is wrong, being copying the good people is right. That's the, that's the, your mentality is wrong. And you hate the Ruby because it's promoting an idea that's opposite to your silly beliefs. Don't get me wrong, having self-reflection is something that a lot of characters need, and watching it is what makes characters all the better since it allows us, the people, to see that they're not perfect, that they don't have all the answers, that they can grow. However, the way- Growth only comes when you be yourself. When you accept yourself, love yourself, growth happens. Growth can only happen when you accept yourself, when you be yourself, and when you stop making an effort to be someone else, to be something pretentious. Every single effort is an effort to become pretentious. You know, all these great writers and all these uh, buzzwords about do six machina, plot holes, blah blah blah. All these are uh, this desire to become great critics, desire to be smarter than the others. You know, your entire YouTube career is all about labeling certain people as good, labeling certain fictional stories as good, and then blaming other shows for not being uh, similar to that uh, fictional stories that you consider to be good. Ruby's message is the exact opposite of Mangakam's way of uh, philosophy, Mangakam's way of life, because, yeah, being yourself is different than uh, copying and, and trying to, uh, you know, be pretentious and try to act in a righteous way. It's done in volume 9 isn't all that effective, and to me, is really kind of disgusting. Not only for the fact that it seems like Yang, Blake, and Weiss all dropped about half of their IQ points or failed their perception rolls to realize that Ruby was obviously falling deeper and deeper into depression, but the show is really messy with how Ruby just gets over this. So this requires a little explanation. This season, we learned that if the rest- You kind of have to get over it! You can't just go move you for around forever. It's not a healthy mentality. ...residents of the Ever After get killed or died by- And I kind of hard understand, because, you know, Ruby is looking at this thing and learning and changing, and you're watching this exact same show and you didn't- change along with her, so I kind of like understand, yeah, in the sense Manga Cam and all these critics are left behind because they didn't get the message. Like anything other than the Jabberwock XB, they come back and come back as something different. And if you're not liking where this is going, then all aboard the crazy train! <laughs> so Yang, Lake, and Weiss essentially come to the conclusion that this process is good for the creatures of the Ever After, with Jean being against it. And Neo's plan is to push Ruby to the point where she essentially offs herself. Yes, it's exactly what you're thinking. That. Before we get to the actual disgusting part of you this- You should kill yourself! <laughs> I can't do the meme. I'm probably going to get uh, demonetized, but... I like yeah, the, the low tier got me. That, that I really hate when Rooster Teeth touches this subject matter. The obvious example is when Penny asks John to off her as well. I really don't want to repeat myself for that. Oh, you like should I off me right now! <laughs> Dress this notion pretty well in my Volume 8 review. Ruby is a based show, I'm not gonna lie. Before TLDR, it was disgusting to me and really shaky. And now, we're doing it again. Here's why I think it's bad. This ascension of Ruby doesn't change her. When she comes back out of being turned into a tree, yes, that's how it happens. She changed! She, she, she stopped being guilty! She, she accepted for herself for who she is! She grow as a person. Ruby had all her depression and guilt built up. It was shoved in her face by Neo, bringing her to the point where she didn't want to be herself anymore. And by the end, it's all forgotten. There was no reason from feeling the inadequacy as herself to then feel like being herself is enough five minutes later. How did she come to this conclusion? I love you. Because she saw Summer failing in every single person, yeah! This is also one of the problems of, you know, time restraints, a lot of time skips. This also, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. Just the way you are. Like she, uh, in, the, in this current time, went over all these people's, uh, uh, like, weapons, and she might have even, like, off screen, uh, saw into their memories, maybe. I don't know. But uh, she realized that, oh, every single person in this world is suffering, and uh, every single person has their own baggages. And the only way to uh, erase this baggage is not to copy other people, it's to be yourself! You should love yourself now, you know? That was it?! That's all it took. To I, what I can hopefully assume a good number of people took from Volume 8 is that Ruby and crew had messed up greatly, and that their actions would have consequences and would change the crew to at least reflect on their choices on how they handled the Atlas situation. But Ruby decides to commit Sudoku, or attempts- There's no, no point in talking about the Atlas situation because it happened in the past. You cannot change the past. Even us talking about it isn't going to change the past. Right in front of her friends. Which, can I say for a moment, they don't do anything to try to stop her? They just stand there like, like, What the hell are you doing? Punch it! Kick it! 
Bite its ass! Do something! Hot oh, damn, that's- Yeah, they can't even stop there. Brought back some memories. My mic's- But you, that is, uh, like, something that can't be changed because it's in the past. What can you do? Suck back then. This is really symbolic of how stupid the rest of the cast were this season. We see why somewhat struggling with the destruction of her home and treat Ruby poorly at points, and how that treatment affected Ruby, but does Weiss grow after seeing Ruby breaking down? Nope. But Ruby comforts Weiss when- I mean, she might have? If you don't know? Places like the market were destroyed. Lake and Yang find happiness, with Yang reaching out to Ruby and then talking down to Ruby for sounding like Ironwood when her emotions are getting the better of her. Some sister. Lake pushes the group away from talking about how Ruby felt when the curious cat was asking questions. There's no realization to this group as to why Ruby doesn't reach out to them. None of them supported Ruby. No one mentions how Ruby gives away the emblem that she always wears, which was. Uh, yeah, they kind of do, but uh, at the same time, I kind of can't blame them because Ruby, from ever since, like, I don't know, Volume 2 or. Ever since volume 2 probably has been the most level-headed. She needed the assistant the least Symbolically a piece of her. So as a result, they kind of just assumed that Ruby's Given away okay to help fine. her friends get back to normal being shrunk something that was what I understand memento from her mother None of this gets addressed Ruby essentially being reset to her happy-go-lucky depression free self Which if you really think about it is kind of disgusting But it's not actually resetting you, you, you're fucked up. No. Uh, it's just that Depression is wrong. You have to get over it some of the day you know, when people like uh, say, oh, I want character development, what they really mean is that uh, they want people to be, uh, you know, happy people to be sad. And yeah, you got that, and at the end of the day, level of that's not a very healthy thing to do. And even then, like, Ruby is not that happy-go-lucky. The happy-go-lucky and uh, instant is, uh, sort of also has to do with uh, your own uh, naivety. And uh, Ruby, at the, even on episode 10, is not like that. She's very really different Lucky in the depression. sense that she's calm, but she's also not like super ditzy. ...free self, which if you really think about it, is kinda disgusting, and I was on the level of David Cage's Beyond Two Souls level of messaging, where if you're unhappy, just off yourself, kitties! There's a magical world out there for you once you do that! Nothing is addressed. We never solve Ruby's problems with her friends, they don't question things and only reaffirm them good to move on. We don't address how Ruby didn't- They questioned it, they questioned it and they realized they can't do anything about it, or learn anything about it from discussing it, so they moved Open on. Up to them. How her friends didn't really reach out to her at all- And anyway, I, yeah... Oh, all for the message of just the way you are. You don't need to change, even if you make mistakes. Mistakes that cost the lives of several you shouldn't that be hurt the so many people. That you, should, you shouldn't reject yourself. Potentially rock the entire- This is a par very paradoxical, like, understanding. Because, uh, yes, people want change. I, and I get it. Growth is great. Change is good. But change through pretentiousness is really bad. Unfortunately, it creates the solution of change, but on the contrary, you're becoming a worse person than you were in the past, World. almost, because you're not accepting yourself or being yourself. You're being controlled by guilt and uh, all this sorrow and all this self-hatred. That, to me, is so narcissistic. And that's worse. That's really, really bad. It's like an ego-driven. No, it's not. Like, accepting yourself is not ego-driven. Especially with the... Like, not trying to off yourself is is not ego driven, you know? Why these characters should change. It's a facade of a character arc. What change? How can you... How do I, like, make a change? You tell me. You don't even know what change they have to go through. D you go on saying, change, 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 change this, character development, that. But tell me, what did they are supposed to learn? Other than the fact that, well, I don't know, maybe uh, be more careful when you ta talk to... Uh, James, I guess, or I don't know, be better at good at be become good at fighting, I guess, in order to not let Cinder and uh, in order to not let Penny die, not let Cinder win, you know, become good at fighting and become good at with your words in order to not uh, wrongly tell uh, Ambrosius the wrong uh, give uh, Ambrosius the wrong instructions no, just get good at fighting bro just good get good at, at, at talking and expressing yourself bro just uh, become a little bit smarter bro disgusting ways possible in my opinion and when we get to the final scenes where the team and Jean essentially talk to the real god and we get that pointless backstory to the two brother gods they're told they had a greater impact than they know and while there's a mention of how one act of dishonesty affected someone terribly, it utterly baffles me that no one thinks about that. How their own actions to each other or Ironwood or their friends and family, it just goes through one ear and out the what other. What are you well supposed to, to think about that? If you keep thinking about that, you're going to miss the present moment. The present moment, which is going, uh, getting to vacuum, understanding everyone uh, and their emotional uh, uh, baggages, you know, understanding themselves, 
and uh, in volume 10 they're going to be helping a lot of out in Bakyo so thinking about the past and meandering about that Vice, is going to be a waste of time. Play no part in helping Ruby get over her depression. They don't even apologize for not reaching out to her as much as they should have. There was so much potential in doing that. It would have really affirmed the team aspect of the group. Ruby came back with all her depression. You, even you don't know how exactly those things are going to happen. Before you criticize, at least offer a better solution. And this is clearly not a better solution, being stuck in the past. Erased. There was no longer any need for the rest of the team to take responsibility for her well-being. Nothing was ever wrong with Ruby in the first place. Like, you know, you, you, ha you want more, I guess. But life is just that simple. You know, there's- You know, accept yourself, love yourself, and because through those acceptance, growth happens. It's a bit of a- Growth is not something that you just force, that, uh, force, force upon you. You can't just pretend to be another person. Because all those other people have their own problems. My channel in my last Ruby video with me saying that I'm tired of Ruby and yet I still watch it. You wanna know why I watch the show despite being tired of it, despite all my criticisms of it? Because you, deep down, know that the show has something interesting to say. It's your own beliefs that are wrong. But despite my opinions on That's it. That's why all these like critics that keep watching this show. Because deep down, they know that uh, Ruby as a show is trying to say something very deep. And they themselves are either not accepting that uh, deep thing or not uh, understanding that deep thing. So they continue on keeping on watching and watching because deep down they know that they're wrong. It's because I believe that Ruby has a lot of attention. I don't say any of this to be fact. I believe that this is just my opinion. You can disagree with it, but I don't know, it just becomes so jaded. I feel disgusted at this series now, how nothing matters, how our heroes can do no wrong, how they don't actually grow from their mistakes, how they reaffirm, how they can be horrible people and be treated as heroes. This- In order to become whole, you need to love yourself. Hatred only splits. You hate something and it becomes good and bad. When you look at, you know, fiction, then you all create this, all these uh, fictional stories, then things turn into good and bad. This is good, this is bad. When you create, say something, this is good, then immediately because you create this good thing, another uh, thing got separated from that good thing and becomes bad. When you can say, oh, this is good writing, what you really meant to say is that you're splitting things. You're splitting this is good, this is bad. Then you're splitting life into good and bad. And because of your own uh, judgmental discriminatory behavior, entire life and your life and therefore yourself become bad you know when you say uh hatred is bad then you're all splitting your own hatred into a, a bad thing you did a part of you that is good and a part of you that is hateful which is bad then you say all oh, my past mistakes and who i was in the past and my certain behaviors are bad then you're splitting yourself into good and bad parts and a split person can never be whole and therefore never can be healthy and never can be uh, righteous because you never accepted yourself how can a uh, broken person split into different parts can be great so the only way to All unite yourself and be whole is to love yourself you every part of pointless. you it was nothing. All it did was say to the cast, you don't need to change. And frankly, if the characters aren't going to grow, what's even the point now? You don't know the de deepness of growth. You don't know how to create growth. Point I really am done with Ruby. You know, you know nothing and you're complaining about all this because, you know, this show is challenging your silly beliefs. And it comes out next year, I really have no intention of watching it on my own accord. The only reason why I'll watch it is if my fans pay me to do it. I've become so jaded with the series, and it's not just because of the show, with some other stuff like the fandom that gets on my case, even though I try not to attack- Exactly! There are problems with your own tastes, because uh, you're creating your- you, you have this- so many, uh, like, problems, like, look at this, like, creating so many problems, you know? Oh, this show, this is this good design, this is bad design, this is the bad villain, this is the good AI villain, this is the bad AI villain. The right and wrong way to manipulate, or to, uh, blah blah blah, you know? The right and wrong way to make a villain. Eggman is good. Eggman is great. But that doesn't mean like Armstrong is bad. Armstrong is great. But in all those people are great because they're being themselves. When you try to copy other people, only then it becomes ugly because you're trying to be pretentious. People and be treated as heroes. This volume was pointless. It was nothing. All it did was say to the cast, you don't need to change. And frankly, if the characters aren't going to grow, what's even the point now? I think at this point I really am done with Ruby. Even if volume 10 comes out next year, I really have no intention of watching it on my own accord. The only reason why I'll watch it is if- There's, uh, yeah, it's your own, like, lack of understanding that's at fault, unfortunately. My fans pay me to do it. 
I've become so jaded with the series, and it's not just because of the show, it's some other stuff like the fandom that gets on my case, even though I try not to attack them. Even if the show is good, even if the entire next season is great, after so much terrible writing and how our characters don't actually face the consequences of their actions, it'd be too late for me. And that to me is extremely sad. I don't want to say that about any piece of media that I consume. I try to find any positives that I can, but at this one I don't know what to say. I guess there's only one last thing to say. The only way to uh, see the positives is to throw away your own beliefs. And accept yourself now! Because, you know, all of this hatred and stuff is because of your own, like, like the main, the main core of why, uh, Manga Cam is hating this Say. show is because his understanding of growth is completely wrong. Completely wrong. Ruby's understanding, uh, the show's understanding of growth is right. Because it's all about accepting yourself, understanding yourself, and being yourself. And Manga Kamen, in his entire career, has been trying to be this someone else trying to simp for other shows and uh, try and uh, blaming other shows for not being similar to the shows that he enjoys peace yeah i don't know man i think you, your own understanding is kind of wrong i mean time will only tell sooner or later if what i say is the truth you, you will understand it might take i don't know a year 10 years 20 years Maybe uh, in your in your next life, maybe.